Hey guys, Modsy here. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, this is the first time I've ever featured myself on camera before, I guess. Um, just a note, my YouTube channel has literally just been a dumping ground for all of my uh, sim racing and random gameplay videos in the past. Um, but I've kind of thought I might do something a little bit more with it and share some of my, um, basically, my stuff that I've got to do with my collection and uh, some of my retro parts and retro gaming and stuff on it. Just, just for a bit of fun, basically. Um, so the other day I uploaded a video about my collection of uh, retro video cards, or my collection, basically, that I'm putting together. And uh, originally that video was just intended to be chucked onto my uh, Facebook and some other social media and uh, onto a, uh, a couple of different hardware forum communities I'm a, I'm a part of. Um, but what I didn't actually think about is that uh, there'd be a lot of people with questions uh, and in the first couple of days I got a couple of questions like okay cool start answering it uh, well that video has actually now been seen by quite a few people and especially on the, the social media side of things and so I've been getting a lot of questions about where I'm buying all my cards from um, is it just eBay that I'm buying them from is it uh, you know is there any other places that I'm getting them from so I thought I'd just answer a couple of the questions that I've been getting pretty repeatedly uh, rather than have to tell them over and over and over again, I guess, with the same information. Um, so I've got a couple of cards here in front of me that I'm going to use to basically explain and answer some of the questions with, um, the reasons for why I got the cards, etc. Uh, and then basically I'm just going to go into detail about um, some of the methods and practices that I put into play when actually buying hardware off certain through certain places like eBay uh, and some other places as well. So, just a bit of a background, if you have not seen the other video, don't worry, it's nothing special. It was literally just me holding my camera uh, and panning along here and basically just showing my video cards and explaining a couple of them. That's really it. Um, it's not a very big, you know, important video at all. But basically, um, I decided several years ago that I was kind of bored with the current generation of my computer. Um, there was just no excitement in buying new parts anymore it was just seemed like a bit of a you know year in year out nothing's nothing big has come to market nothing changed uh, and I've kind of got my current system at a level where I just haven't wanted to touch it now for several years um, so I thought what else can I do with my time I have this itch and I have this need to tinker and play around with hardware still but I don't want to touch my main system so uh, having already owned a couple of the video cards from my past I thought why not fill out the entire collection? So that's what I set out to do. So almost three years ago, I decided to start actively collecting all the cards that I've had ever since I first started getting into modding and building my own PCs, which takes us back to around uh, early 2000s. So very, very early 2000s. Back. I can't remember the exact year. It's either 2002 or 2003, one of the two. But um, yeah, so uh, basically that, that goes all the way back to AGP and even PCI graphics cards. So, for instance, I've got my Voodoo 3DFX cards here as well. So, um, yeah, that's basically what my collection is. Now, I do have other hardware collections, like I do have a small sound card collection. Again, similar thing, sound, sound, uh, sound cards, sorry, from when I first started getting into building PCs. Um, and at the moment, my office is kind of surrounded. <laughs> I've got boxes all along the wall here, and my other retro system, and then my main system and stuff over here. So that sort of stuff I'll, I might do in another video if anyone wants to see my retro systems at all or um, I'm definitely going to do some gameplay videos on them and chuck on the channel for sure because there's a lot of cool games that I've wanted to go back and actually play and I thought well you guys seem to like this sort of stuff so I thought I'd do a couple of videos. Um, they're not ready just yet because I'm waiting for a capture card for my PC um, because of the way I've got my current PC laid out I've had to get a specific sized capture card that will actually fit in my case um, and I had to order one online so that one's currently waiting to turn up and when that does I'll finally be able to capture stuff from my other system. Uh, so the first question is uh, where do I buy all my cards from? Uh, is it just eBay that I get them from? If so, how do I pick the cards that I do? Um, so yes, a few years ago, uh, three or four years ago, is eBay is basically where I started because it was the only place that I knew, other than maybe hardware forums and things like that, it's the only place that I knew to really look for stuff that was actually being sold. Um, but in more recent, especially in the last year or so, uh, eBay has become my last resort, because I've actually found other places um, and gotten really lucky with these other places. So eBay to start with is kind of a 
win lose. Well, not really win lose. It, it's a bit of a roll of the dice um, on on older stuff, especially going back to the AGP era of cards. Um, one of the first cards that I tried to find on eBay was the uh, ATI Radian 9700 Pro, and I to date have tried to buy six of them, <laughs> six of them there, um, with no no success. Uh, whether that be I've put a bid in, won the bid, and then the seller has contacted me and said, I've just tested the card before shipping and it's dead. Do you still want it? And I'm like, no, I want the card working. So refund me, please. So yeah, um, that's happened a couple of times and it is extremely frustrating because it turns out that a lot of these places, especially from uh, the European continent, uh, like Russia and some other places like that, they just get all these cards, never test them, put them up on eBay as... 100% tested and working, and then they don't touch them until someone actually buys them, and then they test them. And then they tell you whether the card's working or not, after you've already paid the money for it. So, that's a big lesson to learn in itself, is if the country, uh, sorry, if the item is just no description, very vague, and very low quality photos, um, and the item is from that region, that area, uh, just be very wary and ask the seller before you buy to upload higher resolution images of the product or even just simply ask them for, if they've got something to take a photo, they've got a device that can do video. Uh, it's not like they're using a potato to take a photo with. Anything that can do photo, photo these days can also do video. Just get them to do a video of the test system that they're using with the card in it, uh, showing windows in the background running a 3D application or something like that where you can see that it is that card actually running. Um, I basically, after the first couple of times of trying to buy a 9700, I turned to that method and very quickly you would notice because they'd be like, oh yeah, I tested the card, sorry, it's not working. And they were honest because you showed interest in their product, they lied in their description, they've now tested it and it's not actually working. So that works, it's a foolproof method. Yes, sometimes they just won't respond if they just want to, you know, flog the card off for as much money as they can, don't care whether it's working or not, they probably won't respond to you, but the ones that do and want to actually sell a product, they'll respond to you, which is pretty good. And I have had people actually uh, do videos showing cards working in the foreground. Um, one in particular, the card was not working, but he said, thanks for the honesty, and uh, you know, I, I, I said, sorry, thanks for the honesty, and blah, 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 but that's just the way it goes. Um, but the other place that I found on eBay that I that kind of led me into now one of my main sources for cards is e-waste or e-recycling companies. Companies that buy a lot of corporate or a lot of business machines or get donated machines um, that they then part out to resell or scrap or whatever. Um, these places can be a gold mine for finding um, very good condition uh, parts, especially CPUs, RAM and graphics cards. Graphics cards are a little bit harder, they're a little bit rarer, especially gaming grade and high performance graphics cards. But if you want a CPU really, really cheap, even up to let's say Intel's 4000 and 6000 uh, model C uh, CPUs, you can find them dirt cheap compared to what people are asking for on eBay or even on uh, you know buy swap sell places because these companies get such high volumes of products. They don't want a premium, they just want to move the product. So it's actually a very good place to, to search. So if you live in a, in, a, in a state or a city or an area that is rather large, you will have an e-waste or an e-recycling company somewhere around you. Uh, the ones that we have here in Australia, uh, which I've successfully bought products from at a very, very good price, um, some of them have stores on eBay, so they just use eBay as a storefront and they don't that way they don't have to deal with uh, that, that side of things on their own website. Um, but then some actually just have a website with a shopping cart and all their parts listed on their website. And then you just give them a call and say, hey, I'm interested in buying this, this, this. Uh, this is my postcode, can you ship it to me? Or if they're a local one, like there is down the road from me, um, you can go and pick it up if you want to, which is really, really good. So, as an example of that, this is one of the recent cards that I actually bought, and I'm sorry there is a light in front of me that's not faded too well, but um, this is a, my 88 XFX 8800 GTS 640 Meg XXX Edition card. Um, this card is in almost mint condition. 
there was not a speck of dust on it. There's not even any micro scratches and the film was still on the, the cooler. Uh, like that clear plastic film that they put over that was still on that. I paid $20 Australian for this with free shipping from a company in Queensland, from one of the e-waste places in Queensland. You go on eBay, look anywhere for these cards, they're over $100 or more. Um, this was a bargain and it was the only graphics card they had in their entire stock of like almost 10,000 products but they had a section dedicated for graphics cards which means they have them often enough to warrant them putting an actual section in there for them. So I'm keeping tabs on them now because if they're only going to charge $20 for something like that, that's a bargain. This, this thing is, it overclocks really well which is really nice. So this was an absolute bargain. Um, so the third place that I actually buy a lot of my parts from are, uh, I'm a part of a couple of big uh, IT or enthusiast uh, PC forums, I guess you can say. And uh, one of those being like Linus Tech Tips, for example. I've uh, been a big fan of theirs for a long time. They have a nice, uh, you know, buy, swap, sell, trade section of their forums. Uh, very good, very trusted members, I would say 99% of them. Um, and I've actually successfully bought a couple of cards off users from there. Um, I personally used like to do the transaction then through eBay because it guarantees things like postage costs and uh, the logistics of you know all that kind of stuff makes it a lot simpler. Some people don't use eBay and they don't they they just have never had an account. And for that, then I just say, look, have you got a PayPal account at the least? Let's just do the transaction through PayPal because then there's a bit of security with that as well. That's probably the easiest way to handle the money side of things. But in terms of finding cards, I have got two cards on my way from users from that particular forum uh, specifically that were basically donated at the price that the guy asked me for. Um, they're, they're used, they're a bit dusty, but the cards are working. Uh, and uh, I've got to be very thankful for that guy because um, those cards were finding, or they were proving to be rather difficult to actually find in working conditions. So um, they're, the, they're the three main places, eBay, E-waste or e-recycling places are incredible. Um, I guess the other thing that fits into that is things like uh, if you're in America or Canada or a place like that, like Goodwill. We don't have Goodwill here in Australia. Uh, we have places like Salvation Army uh, and some other charity places that do handle some IT products. Um, there's places like that that you can go to, but because we have such a large e-waste business here in Australia as well, um, those places are a little bit split apart, so um, the e-waste and e-recycling is a lot more, uh, you're a lot more likely to find what you're looking for at those places, um, just a matter of time really. So the other question that I'm actually asked as well is, uh, how am I managing to find some of the cards in such good condition and working order uh, compared to the ones that they've found on eBay and things like that? Um, just basically going through the same channels as I mentioned about finding the cards. Uh, before, just uh, without being a silent buyer, I will actually contact all the sellers um, and basically ask them, to, especially if they're on eBay, I ask them to upload high resolution photos of the cards. That way I can guarantee, or well not guarantee, but have a lot greater accuracy in looking at things like uh, the quality of capacitors, seeing whether any are burnt out or burst, things like that. Um, but it also gives you a good opportunity to look at cards themselves and see whether there's any browning or scorching or anything like that to see whether they've had a cooler fail and the card's been run until it just burnt out and things like that. Uh, a good example of that, and I knew I was buying this uh, in the condition that it is in, is my GeForce 4 TIE 4600. Now this is a one of the more rarer Asus uh, V8 460 Ultras. It's not the top of the top of the end one, but it's still a nice card. Um, I paid eight dollars for this with two dollars shipping, so it was literally about ten bucks. I wanted it specifically because I had this Nvidia cooler. The card came as is with no cooler on it, and uh, I bought it knowing it was dead and not working, just so that I could fill out my collection and have one of these just sitting there. I had no intention of actually ever using it or running it in a PC at all. If I manage to find one in the future that's actually working for a good price, I'll probably get it. Uh, but for the moment, I bought this one just to, for aesthetic reasons, really. Um, but as an example, this card, when I asked the guy for a high resolution photo of it, even though it was dead, he was happily and he, uh, happy and able to do it and he obliged. And it showed, basically on the back 
this is the back of the card, where the cooler is, this whole region uh, here is actually scorched. It's actually brown. Uh, on, the, on the purple PCB, it's actually very visibly brown. Um, and I said what actually happened, and he said, yep, the cooler died, it was in his father's computer, and it, he ran it for several weeks, and it basically ran without a cooler, and it just eventually died. So he was just getting rid of it. And I'm like, cool, no worries. But that's a good way, that's a good indication as well if, if a card of this era is actually working or not. One of the other questions that I get asked is, how do I find cards in such good condition, especially cards with, uh, for example, reference coolers in good, good condition? And there's a bit of a secret to that. Uh, I don't actually look for reference cards, and here's why. The, one of the recent cards that I bought, this uh, 7950 GX2 NVIDIA, um, this card is a really, really nice card, but all of the ones that came with this reference NVIDIA reference cooler, uh, most of them that you can find on eBay are the OEM Dell cards. Be careful of those because they are lower clocked than the standard consumer ones. So ask to confirm the clock speeds because some of them are a bit different. Uh, an easy way to tell is if they have the extended mounting bracket for bigger workstation systems, they're an OEM card uh, and they will be lower clocked. So just be careful of that. Um, if you get ones from like MSI or Gigabyte, which I quite regularly see, uh, they are good to get, but you'll have to, you, you'll have to be happy with the cooler being branded as they are. The one that I've got isn't a reference one. This is a Lead Tech Winfast Edition card. It's the PX7950GX2 THD. This card did not come looking like this. This card came with the reference sticker on top of the actual cooler itself. Now the condition of the sticker was a mess. It was, it, it, it's literally dirty, it's got scratches and stuff all in it. Uh, part of it was already peeling up off the top which actually led to me to actually buying the card because a lot of companies or a lot of board partners don't actually remove, whoop, don't actually remove the original Nvidia sticker uh, or decal, they just put their own over top of it. And the sticky stuff can just be rubbed off with your finger. So if you manage to find a card that you can clearly see has a sticker on it, sometimes you have to get high resolution photos and you can zoom into the edges and you might be able to just see a little bit of the other sticker underneath showing through. Uh, and it's a good way to buy cards and if you want specifically the reference looking uh, cooler on them. This one is in pretty much mint condition. It's completely shiny. There's only a couple of fingerprints on it now from me uh, And the, the fan itself as well is in really good condition or well, the fans for this one. So That's a bit of a trick. Look for look for board partner cards that have stickers or decals um, To be sure you will have to ask so for example if you wanted a reference 6800 uh, six, uh, 8800 for example uh, XFX is a company that do uh, put their own decal on there, and they do remove the standard in video one. So you won't be able to remove XFX stickers and have them be referenced, unfortunately. But Lead Tech is a company that have always done it. So if you want a reference-looking card, uh, look for look for the Lead Tech ones. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, one of the final things that I actually do wanted to talk about is uh, basically if you're planning to buy a retro card to use in a retro system, uh, I highly recommend not running a stock cooler unless the card is something that has a really nice cooler like this one, which is quite quiet actually, considering the age of the card. Um, cards of like the older, even AGP generation and the, the first round of PCI Express cards like the 6800 uh, or the, the X800 or, or X19 or 1800 cards for example, they had ridiculously loud coolers on them that were also prone to uh, dying and being not very effective. If you happen to buy a card that has a really crappy cooler, a broken fan, or the stickers half ripped off it, or something like that, but the card works, I highly recommend getting one of these Arctic Cooling Silencer coolers. Throughout all the 2000s, um, this company made multiple different versions of this cooler to, feed, to fit sorry, on 
all the different cards that you can buy uh, in the market of that era. Um, so this one specifically for my X800 XT. Uh, this cooler I think is the uh, it's the ATI Silencer 1 and it fits the 9000 cards and the X800 and uh, whatever cards as well. But you can get ones very similar to fit the GeForce 4s, FXs, 6800s and a lot of different models to fit all of those cards. I highly recommend it if you're planning to use a card in a system for a long time uh, because these things are very quiet and they do have very good cooling over the reference thin stock coolers that come on cards. If you're getting a more modern card uh, that's probably in the 2010 era or newer or 2009 era or newer, same company that makes these coolers started making these big coolers. This one I bought specifically when I was using my uh, GTX 580 in my partner's PC. She wanted something a lot quieter that was uh, a lot cooler. Uh, in the end, unfortunately, this didn't fit in her case, but be careful of that. Um, these coolers are also really, really good, and again, they suit a lot of different graphics cards. They have different models to fit, and they are very, very effective and very nice. And you can pick them up reasonably cheap. But they are very big, so make sure you've got a case that does actually fit them. Um, so uh, on that note, um, thank you very much for watching uh, the video everyone. As I mentioned, this is something I've never done before, I haven't ever put myself on camera before, so it's a bit of a, a new thing for me. But um, yeah, basically thanks for all the questions and the feedback, it was a lot of fun to go through and, and sort of read all these comments, which I was not expecting at all. Um, yeah, if you do have any other comments or anything like that at all, if you want to know what cards I'm looking for, uh, chuck a link in the, uh, chuck a, you know, a question, sorry, in the description and um, I'll let you know if, if any cards I'm looking for in the future or anything like that. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I will be doing some more videos in the future. I'm not sure when, but I'll be doing some in regards to my different retro systems, uh, my Pentium 4 system and my AMD Athlon XP system, uh, and then my PCI Express SLI Crossfire system as well that I've got, um, that I'm actually running and using at the moment. So um, yeah, thanks very much. Um, catch you all next time. See ya.